Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Sevtech Ages. So I'm over here back in the Exoria base. I was waiting on this to finish up. It's a golden chip set. I do need one of those today. So I've got that running through. It's just gold and redstone together, and then I've got it. I'm just going to make redstone chip sets after that, but um, you'll notice over here our cows are gone. I have removed them. So they are no longer on the Exoria planet anymore. I haven't actually set up any other animals just yet. Uh, I'm actually going to be working up to those. But if we pop over to the storage center, uh, first thing I have done is I've kind of finished out the glass. Um, or somewhat. I think I've still got a little bit of shaping up on this side. Because, of course, I want some broken glass. Um, so I was I was working on the broken glass a little bit uh, since last episode. Uh, whoops. So used to having double jump on Sevtech. Um, but on the outside here... It's a bit better. What's attacking me? Okay. Anyways, we've got some broken glass there, and then if we pop over here, uh, we've got a little bit of broken glass right there. Um, so I did try to clean that stuff up a little bit, and let's see. I can't remember if there's anything major that I've done in here. I did add, I moved one of our trash cans over from Exoria Planet, and I added a couple crafting tables over there, but that's the main thing. Um that I've done. I also went out and did some mining and gathered up some uh, some more niobium and coal from this dimension. So over here, actually, sleep. Okay, so anyways, I have moved over. Um, this is of course the the multi block for making the animals, the life infuser. I did move that over here and uh, got that moved over. Also, if you did not notice, if you didn't download the world, I did craft one of these. After last episode, I've been meaning to, to, to cover it and get into it. It's a Tome of Knowledge from Thermal Foundation. And basically it just allows us to uh, to store up XP. And then we can hit V to enable or disable auto-collect. So that it automatically collects any experience that we get. And I figure we might as well because we're not really using XP at the moment. Until we get into enchanting, which technically we could get into right now. But we just haven't. I don't want to take a chance on losing that. I haven't died in a bit, but... I still don't want to take a chance on losing that. So, um, over here, I have done a bit of road work. Uh, this area right here, this is going to connect to our first bridge that spans across this gap here um, and will connect over to the other side. It's going to be a fairly large bridge. So, basically, just planning out where that's going to go. I haven't really started to build. I added some steel scaffolding there. That's been about it. Um, over here, um, over here, I've added an additional windmill tower. I also upgraded both of these to MV cable. Got rid of the LV. Since I'm going to be doing MV on all of these, I might as well, you know, I figured I might as well go ahead and upgrade them. And right up here, you'll notice that I did change it up a little bit. Basically, I have them pumping down into an MV capacitor right there, and then it connects over, and then into another MV capacitor, and then it connects over. And I'm using an MV capacitor at each tower as kind of like a, you know, like a directional station. So all of it connects into MV capacitors down the line and moves in towards this temple area. So the MV wire has come over to here and is bringing the MV power from these two windmills to this location for right now. And then over here, um, kind of the same thing. I've got three windmills set up over here. Um, that's all the windmills I've gotten done <laughs> so far. Technically, I've got the traded wood I could craft more, but crafting the windmills is one thing. Building out the structures is a totally different thing. They do take a little while. Um, I've gotten I've gotten kind of to where I can kind of flow through these. So, I mean, it takes... I'll prep the materials, and it takes about, you know, 20 minutes to build one of these out. But um, they do take a little bit of time <laughs> to prep and everything for it. Plus, I started getting low on, a little bit lowish on steel. I think it's built up because I let it run overnight, but... Um, so we do have five of these all together right now. I did have to build little extensions out on these. Um, I'm not for sure if I'm going to stick with that shape or if I'm going to change up the shape a little bit. But basically the cables just wouldn't connect all the way over without pushing it out a couple blocks. So, um, But anyways, we do, have, we do have three of these. And they're all pretty well identical as well. So... Um, and then, let's see. I've got power cable right here. And it comes over, because I couldn't bring it directly down right there. It comes over to here, and then part of it goes over to the temple. Part of it splits off. goes here, and then it comes down over through there. And then it comes over into a capacitor bank 
setting right there. <laughs> An MV capacitor bank. And if we pop over to here, and we pop up here, um, right here is where the power comes out at. So right on this wall um, is where that MV line comes out. And I did some thinking. Originally, I was planning on getting into industrial apiaries right now. However, each one of those takes 20 RF per tick, which on its own, it's not a lot of RF, but if I was to change all the apiaries over to industrial apiaries, it's going to get a tad bit expensive on RF, more than what I'm producing at the moment. We're going to be moving into, uh, you know, bigger, better power generation before too long, but right now it's a little bit, uh, I need to be a little bit more careful with power. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to start with just moving our standard apiaries over, automating the you know, the processing side of things, because I think that's a little bit more important, you know, getting coal being produced, getting tungsten being produced, getting, you know, all these materials that right now we just have the combs coming in. We can't actually utilize it. Plus, just getting things out of the Exoria base is kind of, kind of important, I feel like. Uh, by the way, okay, I said this is going to be the bridge. This right here is actually going to be where our workshop is setting. So right in this little area is where our first, like, little mini workshop section is going to be which we're probably going to get into that um i'll probably start working on that over the weekend so doing a you know a build video uh, for next week working on that workshop um over here i did add a small little lake because this land all kind of went in and i thought it kind of fit nicely so i did add a little like uh not a lake but a little pond right here just to add a little bit more um a little bit more landscape, and I added a little spruce tree growing up out of the middle there. Um, I also added a bunch of trees, as you can tell. Kind of, It's actually kind of cool, because when you're flying through this base right now, like the things are kind of hidden back in behind the trees. Especially if you're on foot, they're very well hidden. And I do quite like that. I'm not done with adding trees, because I haven't even done the backside of it, but um, I did add a few trees. And then over here, I did start working on some of the roads. You know, I, I added railings down through here and over there and over there. Um, kind of just working on a little bit of road work since last episode. And, of course, right over there, it goes off to the right uh, to our turbine. And then if we go left, which I haven't added the rails to this because this building I actually just finished out not too long ago. Um, this is where our cows have been relocated to. So just a small, um, we're gonna, I'm going to be doing a fair few of buildings like this um, I was trying to figure out how I want to set up the cows because I didn't just want to do like a pen you know just fences and there you go there's a square fence with a bunch of cows in it I didn't want to do that so I decided to make almost like a little cow stable area um, and I'm actually pretty happy with the way it turned out and it was just kind of a quick little thing I'm gonna be doing the same thing for pigs and not the exact same building but a similar building style for pigs and chickens and stuff like that so um, which I'll explain the layout of the base here in just a second, kind of what I have in mind. But um, anyways, this is, these are the architecture blocks, the, um, I can't remember what they're called. They're under a classical, um, but they kind of have like a little ridge design in them. And these are from snowy wood. Um, and then these are actually mud brick slabs from Biomes of Plenty, just smelting mud to make uh, mud bricks. And then we've got some foggy oak right back in here. Uh, these are primal core lanterns, which is torches. These are actually thatch from roots. And then I did some architecture slanted blocks there uh, for that. And that right there, this little fence is architecture craft uh, snowy wood again. Um, the floors here, these are reed blocks and then mud bricks again. And I did some wheat, like little feeding chambers. And you'll notice I did dark oak slats. And then that way the thatch kind of like hangs through, you know, like it really would. You know, straw would be, straw and thatch and stuff would kind of have those like bits of of straw and thatch you know sticking sticking out um, and very uncamped looking and i quite like it so and then i carry the dark oak slats kind of like it's holding up the thatch there on both sides and then over here i added like kind of like a little drinking pond for them they like playing in it and there's a tree growing there a little bit of shade and then right over here i have some troughs which it looks like they ate all their wheat that's why i have so many cows i just filled that up or i didn't fill it up i think i added like 30 something wheat in there it was basically what i could spare i wanted to make more lasagna but anyways it's a lot nicer than the little pen the little uh like what three by six pen that we had over in exoria base um, by the way these fences are vertical dark oak fences from earthwork earthworks so just a heads up but i'm actually pretty happy with it um this this whole area has to be done um 
you'll notice the machine stuff didn't carry over to this section and that's because the machine the crash site and stuff's more centered around in this area um, it's kind of what I'm thinking so we like I said we will still have some machine aspects of some of our future builds and some builds that are more heavily machine based but not all of them are going to be that way because this little civilization these little guys are a little bit more uh, you know rustic tribal kind of people so they're creatures and <laughs> sprites so um and then that's the back side of it so um and the roof roof area so i haven't done any real landscaping over here aside from adding that pond but and then clearing out a bit of the grass as well um but my plan is for this base uh right now my current plans of course i'm going to add more things but you know, right over here, I said there's going to be a bridge, there's going to be a workshop. The bridge is going to go over to, um, actually on the other side of this, there's a little desert. And we're probably going to use that for um, some of our stuff later on. Probably a lot of our environmental tech stuff is going to be over here. Some of our, maybe some of our higher tech is kind of what I'm thinking at the moment. I'm not 100% sure. But I do want to have some fun with uh, some desert building over here. Because I do quite like this little area over here. Um, but over, back over to this side. Okay, right now we kind of have the area where the, the storage area is, the bees. Um, we're going to have a little small workshop over there. And then we have the bee processing area and all the wind, the big wind turbines over here. If we continue on back in this direction, um, we're going to have some structures back in here. Um, I'm not 100% sure what all is going to go back here, but it's going to be more of like a foresty type build. Um, back in, because we've got this like just really big dense forest. So I think the majority of the building will be back over in here. And it's going to move. This area over here is a little bit more tropical looking with all the bamboo and vines and stuff like that. And then back in here it's going to be more like uh, forest, spruce forest, you know, type feel to it. And then kind of what I'm thinking is over in this direction we have to like these really nice flat plains for a ways. Which to me feels like the perfect place to create farmland. So a lot of our farming stuff's going to be over here. The animals are going to be over here. Um, you know, just basically off in this whole area here. So that's why I went ahead and set up the cows there. That little industrial hemp farm, I'm probably going to set one up over here. Or maybe an automatic one. I will still have some small little farms, kind of like that industrial hemp one scattered around the base. Just manual farms halfway just for decoration long term. But I will probably decorate this out a little bit so that... Uh, I don't know, it's a little bit more decorative and maybe not just a straight 9x9. Nine nine. So, I'm um, also added the glowstone fences right here. I actually raised it up to two because I kept having animals and uh, creatures climbing on top of this, jumping off and smashing my industrial hemp um, pretty, pretty consistently. So, I did add that in there. So, anyways, quite a bit of building. I actually quite like that little, that little structure. I think it's going to look cool whenever we have like a few little structures there. I mean, they're all like really small builds. They don't really take a ton of time, necessarily. Just little quick animal builds, <laughs> basically. It's, it's, probably, it's probably one of the most simple structures ever, but uh, <laughs> I hope you guys like it. I try to do a little bit of work on the detail aspect of it. And the thatch, honestly, the thatch really adds to it. The thatch and having architecture craft for little things, because um, it almost kind of looks like, you know, wood grain detail along the floor there. So... I do, I do love having roots in the pack for that thatch. <laughs> now, I will say whenever you do architecture craft with it, it doesn't keep that, like, you know, bits of straw hanging off. It doesn't keep that aspect, but you can hide that, uh, that slanted, the slanted blocks here. You'll notice it looks like there's straw hanging through there, but it, or thatch hanging through there, but it's actually from the block above it, kind of sticking through, and it, it, I don't know, it makes it look good, I think. It honestly, even though it's slanted, it's, you can't tell it's like not just natural thatch so it does work quite well right there like i said there'll probably be a, uh, a building video next week maybe the beginning of next week and then of course i'm going to continue working on these little like hut structures i do plan on building a lot of structures to this style sort of um some will be just for decor like little houses that the grove sprites can live in stuff like that but these will just be for animals little stable type areas so and the cows have lots of room to move around, which is nice. But the first thing that I want to do, let me go ahead and grab our MV wire relays, our MV wire connectors, uh, MV wire coil. Let me grab sturdy casings and 
I made up a bunch more Dawnstone. I, now that we have the metal press, I'm just making it as Dawnstone at the moment. But we're going to need this stuff. We're going to need, uh, I think we're going to need these, maybe. I'm going to go ahead and grab them. And if I need to make more Dawnstone plates, I can. Okay, so anyways, and some of this stuff doesn't even belong in here. I don't know. Oh, whatever. Okay, so anyways, the first thing that we're going to do before we start moving any bees over is I want to make up a couple machines here. First up, I want to make the centrifuge, uh, which is just sturdy casing, copper, and then some glass, which we've got the sturdy casings. Great. Grab this. And there is our first centrifuge. And we're actually just going to go with one for right now because I changed up my original plan. Originally, I was thinking about having a bunch of them, and I actually changed it a little bit, and we'll get into that here in just a minute because I think we're going to make this a lot more efficient than my original, my original idea. So we're going to have a centrifuge. We're also going to need to get a thermionic fabricator. So this right here, sturdy casing, three pieces of glass, chest, and four gold. And there's our thermionic fabricator. And I'm also going to want a soldering iron. So this right here, uh, this is crafted in the carpenter with bronze and iron with some water. So we are going to have to make a carpenter. That's a bit of bronze, some glass, and another sturdy casing. Wait, we've got a carpenter, don't we? <laughs> Before I make this, I think we've actually got a carpenter already. <laughs> now that I think about it, because we made one right for something. Right here it is. Perfect. Um, yeah, we'll just pull this one up. That's fine. Okay, so carpenter. There was a quest, right, for some of this stuff? Uh, they want us to make a squeezer and a moistener. Okay, I don't actually need either of those right now. So we've got our carpenter, our thermionic fabricator, our centrifuge. Let's go ahead and I don't know what I'm doing here. For the soldering iron, we're going to need three pieces of iron and a piece of bronze. And we'll just set our carpenter up like right, right here for right now. That'll be fine. And then let's connect an MV wire connector just right there. And let's plug that up for just a minute. There we go. That's charged up, and I'm going to need a bucket of water. So let's grab that stuff. There we go. We'll throw some water in there, and then our bronze and our three pieces of iron. And then we'll just take and throw our iron and our bronze in there. It's going to start crafting. We only need one of these. There we go. There's that. Let's go ahead and, well, actually, I don't need to clear that out. Let's just grab that. Okay, and now, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and set up the centrifuge. And the centrifuge, we'll get into actually using this here in just a minute. Basically, you can use it for breaking down your honeycombs um, into other, you know, resources. So our centrifuge, we're going to set this up setting just right. Uh, we'll put it right here. Okay, and then we'll have MV wire connector right there. We're going to feed that into a relay. So we'll put the relay setting right there, so that way we can split power off of it to other things. And then we'll put our wire connector right there, and then we'll just plug all this up. So that to there, that down to there, and this now has power. Now before we actually start using this though, I want to make a circuit board for it. Because you can, you can actually add circuit boards to machines. I want to make an intricate circuit board, because that allows us to use four electron tubes instead of just three, two, or one, which I believe we've already made these. Uh, I think we made one at some point, right? Let's see. i tell you what. Let's, um, I wish we had our workshop right now. <laughs> I really, really do. But we'll go ahead and just set our carpenter up right here for right now. This is a temporary spot, but we're going to be using this, you know, on and off, so might as well. And that way it's basically at the place we're going to be working at. So there's some power, and I said this thing needs acid. 100 millibuckets of acid. Okay. And I will say that it'll probably be next week, um, once we get the workshop in place, we're going to get some kind of like fluid, fluid storage little area there, and we're going to set up a pump and actually start pumping up some of this acid so that we have... Um, we're going to use ender tanks and just kind of pump it to... Uh, you know, over into Exoria, so we have acid on hand. So we will get that up and going um, here soon. 
Okay, so we'll toss the acid into our carpenter and we're gonna throw in a circuit board. And what do you want from me? Circuit board and then our gold ore berries. There we go, get that running, making our intricate circuit board. There we go. And then we're gonna have to make some electron tubes for this. Uh, I don't know what I'm, what I'm trying to spell there. So there's a, there's a variety of electron tubes. Most of these are manual and automatic farms. The majority of them are. But if you go down here to the actual forestry, most of these are Benny's Botany. But if you go down to the actual forestry, some of these are for electrical stimulators and for socketed machines and then climatizers as well. And there's one, there's the golden electron tube that decreases power use by 10%. There's also the, uh, the emerald electron tube. It increases speed by 12.5% power use by 5%, or there's the blazing electron tube that increases speed by 25% and power usage by 10%. And actually, the blazing electron tubes, they come out to be, you know, they come out to be less RF consumed per item in that case, because you're getting a 25% speed increase at only 10% power usage increase. So I honestly think that the blazing electron tube is probably the best bet um, if we just go for four straight blazing electron tubes and after a bit of testing I think I'm pretty happy with the performance it does increase power usage by a bit it takes almost three windmills to run it you know constantly to run a centrifuge but the thing is with our setup we're not going to be running it constantly we're going to be um, basically kind of weighing our weighing our combs as to what we actually want and what's just kind of useless in truth and I'll explain that here in just a bit. So blazing electron tubes, these do craft four at a time and they just require five blaze powder and four vacuum tubes which we do have those on hand. Blaze powder of course being fairly easy. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our thermionic fabricator and we're just going to set this up right here and this thing does continue to consume power unless you apply a redstone signal to stop the consumption of power. So we're only going to leave this up for a single craft. Well, it'll only consume power once we put a recipe into there. So let's go ahead and put some vacuum tubes in there. And we'll go ahead and throw those right there. And then let's go over, let's go get our five blaze powder that we need. But you'll notice, like, even though I'm killing mobs and getting XP, I'm not actually gaining any XP. It's going straight into the book, which it does cap out at 10,000 XP, but I'm only about halfway filled on that at the moment. Okay, so our blaze powder goes, whoops, stop it, and I forgot to grab, um, actually I've got some glass on me, so that'll be fine, we'll throw a piece of glass in there, and you can see right here is the temperature threshold that it has to reach to melt that glass down, because it does require a little bit of glass to craft with, there we go, there's our four blazing electron tubes, and we'll go ahead and just pull that up, because that's the only thing that I actually need that for. And then we'll take our soldering iron. I'm actually going to set this, like, right over here. I'm just going to throw our machines right here that we're not using. Okay, so we're going to take our intricate circuit board. We're going to put it right here. We're going to change this to machine upgrade. You can see there's a few different little tabs here. Machine upgrade is what we want. And we want blazing electron tube in all four slots. And we'll hit right there. And there we go. We have our intricate circuit board with four blazing electron tubes. So it's going to have a speed increase of 100%, a power consumption increase of 40%. But since it's on a tick basis on the power consumption, it actually comes out to be less cost per cone, basically, that we're processing. So then we're going to take this and just drop it into our centrifuge and we are set. This thing is ready to go. And if you want to remove this, just take your soldering iron and just right click and it will pull that out. It does take a little bit of durability, um, but I don't really plan on pulling this out anytime soon because this is honestly the best speed circuit board that you can make, and it's actually pretty good. <laughs> honestly, like, if I'm not worried about putting power reduction in this at this stage, I won't be worried about it ever because uh, power just gets easier <laughs> the longer the pack goes and the more infrastructure and stuff that I get built. So let me pop over here. Let me go sleep. And let's see, I want to grab, let me grab a stack of fossilized combs. Fossilized combs, if you run them through a centrifuge, you get coal grains, beeswax, and honey drops. Coal grains, four of those grafted together makes pulverized coal. And then you also get, uh, and that's a 100% chance on those. And you get an 80% chance of beeswax, a 75% chance of honey drops. 
so I got to thinking like the rocky comb, the honeycomb, stuff like that is basically, there we go, that's what you get. You get beeswax, you get honey drops. They are a slightly better chance, but you know, this is going to be automated. We're going to have plenty of combs coming in and being processed. So I got to thinking honeycombs and rocky combs, since they don't really have any like unique produce, I mean, this is pretty much just the generic, the very generic produce coming from combs. It comes from pretty much every comb you're going to get these two things. I'm at least a chance of getting them. I actually don't think we are going to process rocky combs and honeycombs. We're actually going to have those separated out. And basically we're going to store the honeycombs so I can use honeycomb blocks. The rocky combs, I don't think that they're really used for anything. So we're probably just going to trash rocky combs in truth. Um, I mean, I guess I could store them up in a drawer just for the sake of it. I might just in case. I don't know. Nah, I probably won't. It's probably not much point in that, so. Anyways, we're going to grab our stack of fossilized cones. And we'll go ahead and sleep. We'll sleep uh, off the rain real quick. Um, I want to get a Terra Terra Bozu set up. I will say that whenever I set it up, I am planning on it being manual. And that's because I actually like the rain. But personally, I like it like when I'm just playing on my own time. Um, you know, working on stuff or whatever. I like the way the fog rolls in in the misty world when it rains, stuff like that. Okay, so we're going to take our stack of fossilized combs and just toss it in there and it's going to start processing those. Uh, basically, it pulls it into this slot and then it breaks it down one piece at a time into its items. So in that case, we got a cold grain, we got a honey drop, and we got beeswax. Now, one thing I do want to try here, we take a cold grain and I do not have them on me. Okay, I'm going to have to pop over. Okay, I found them. They were in the... Uh, important stuff chest. I meant to put them in the current projects chest. I made up a few more compacting drawers. And I wanted to say, okay, we'll not compact. That's fine. Then we'll just craft it together in that case. That's fine. I'll just put those away for right now. Okay, so our coal grains, we're going to start with these just so I can kind of go over, basically we'll get the first set of bees moved over and get these things being processed. So coal grains, um, in this case, we are going to actually craft something from a quest that's the auto crafter at long last told you we'd eventually get into it okay so right here i want the structured crafter is the one that i want so let's go ahead and craft one of those so structured crafter um it's just a crafting station and a wooden gear okay so there's our structured crafters and let's pop back over and now that we've got our structure crafters let's go ahead and upgrade them to auto workbenches from uh, bc factory so we're going to need a stone gear. That's just cobblestone. Okay. So there we go. Stone gears and upgrade. Oops. Upgrade these to auto workbenches. Basically the main difference is the structure crafter. You have to like place the items in world. You know in the like chests and stuff like that. And um, it's kind of cumbersome. All right. Quest complete. Basic auto crafting. Uh, it's a little bit cumbersome. And the auto workbenches they're a bit slower to craft. But... It's automatic and it's it's for stuff that we're not going to be we're, we, you know it's not going to be just pouring out coal grains like crazy fast so i think um these should be perfectly fine for us and then we'll just pop over here and we're going to set our first auto workbench right here let's say and we're going to drop in coal grains like that and there we go it makes pulverized coal and you can see their slots right there for pulverized coal Okay, so that's in place, and then it's going to be crafting pulverized coal, and with pulverized coal, then we can take it, run it through a condenser, and get ourselves coal from it. So, um, that's going to automate coal, but we do have to move over the condenser, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. And then we're going to start plugging all this up, and then we'll get our first bees moved over. So, and the, the infrastructure will be there to expand upon, so. Okay, so let's go ahead and just grab, I'm going to grab all this stuff. This is going to get disassembled, and it's, it means that these bees that are producing this stuff, this stuff's just going to be getting tossed in, down <laughs> into the world, pretty much. Um, until we get this system moved over, that's fine. Like, before we get all the bees moved over, that'll be okay. I did make some packing tape. Let's go ahead and pack up our frame drawer here that has all of our crystal shards. And we'll take that with us. And we're going to set up our condenser, and I think we're going to put it setting... Oh, it needs 32 exposed concrete, so I'm going to have to fix that. Tell you what, let's actually shift our workbench. Can I just pick this up? Well, I've got stuff in my hand. Let's shift our auto workbench over to... 
Let's actually put it sitting right here instead, I think. And then we'll just reset it up. So four of these makes that. There we go. And then let's set up our condenser. I'm not going to be able to put down the actual condenser just yet because I might have to go get the concrete from over in the... Uh, the base and move it over, but that's fine. Uh, we'll have a chest sitting right there, I think. Yeah, this is still going to classify as closed. So then above that, we're going to have our condenser sitting right there. I'm going to use that for just a second. And then we're going to have, um, oh, let's see. We'll have, uh, I'll just put this down right there for just a second. Clear glass sitting there. And then we'll have our magma block sitting right back there with our crucible our crucible inserter right there we'll have our fluid dropper sitting right there we'll have our hopper oh goodness this is open isn't it yeah that connects outside I'll tell you what we'll just put our flame our frame drawer setting like right here um, let me actually let me actually rotate that Okay, so our frame drawer is going to sit there, and then we'll automate the input for the crystal shards here in just a bit. Um, and then we'll do our item extractor setting there, and our item pipe connecting into our crucible inserter right there, and then the lever right there. Okay, so it goes up into the crucible inserter, and then of course all that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so let me pop over, let me go get the concrete that we need. Um, 32 exposed concrete that we're going to need and I'll be back here in just a second Okay, I went ahead and put the concrete up in that room up there So this should work. So if we pull this up and we place down our steel casing Is it really missing two? Count it exactly. It's got to be a light covering it actually Okay, let me place this back Yep, yeah, right here fairy light Sitting right there and fairy light setting right here. Okay, now it should be it should be working. And I came in right here. Okay, now we should be able to place down our steel casing. There we go. And then let me just tidy up all this like loose liquid flowing around. So now everything's in place. Our steel casing is down. We'll go ahead and toss in our condenser. There we go. And everything's ready. I can start pumping in items into this. And if we take a look inside of our centrifuge that we set up earlier, we have 63 coal grains, 43 honey drops, 52 beeswax. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit of these coal grains, and we'll just toss them into there. You can see that it's starting to craft up our first bits of pulverized coal. I um, mean, is it going to take a second? I mean, it's not the fastest auto-crafting, but it's fast enough, and that's the most important thing. So there's our first bit of pulverized coal. And so then all we have to do is just set up the automation for this. And what we're going to do is we're going to have, um, let's go ahead and put just a hopper setting right here that's going to feed into our steel casing. So if we have any extras, um, you know, too many things that come into this at once, there'll be a little bit of space uh, for it to work with. It should be able to keep up, though, for the most part. And then what we're going to do is we're going to craft an extraction pipe. Um, this one right here, the gravity feed transport pipe. It extracts items slowly from the bottom of an inventory without needing power. And it requires a wooden engine and a wooden transport pipe. So there we go, gravity feed transport pipe. Done. And, oh, let me go ahead and grab just some assorted pipes. Let me get uh, insertion pipes. We are going to need those. And then we'll just get some cobblestone transport pipes. We'll be fine. Um, we don't, for this system, we don't really necessarily, even once we have, like, industrial apiaries, um, I mean, we may eventually upgrade the item systems and stuff like that, but maybe even increase the number of condensers that we have, but for right now, this will be fine. Then we can just kind of expand as needed. So we're going to put our gravity transport pipe just sitting right there, and then we're going to have, um, well, stop. Um, and then we're going to have a clay insertion pipe setting right and then, oh, I should have grabbed a routing pipe, actually. Okay, so we're going to put down a routing pipe setting right there. And then we'll put in our gravity feed pipe. Like that. And then let's go ahead and set up our routing pipe. We're going to say the items can go in this direction. So that way I can have, like, multiple feeds for this. 
and it all goes you know into this hopper here so the items are going to come through they're going to go into this hopper that's going to feed them into our steel casing here and it's going to start producing coal and hopefully this will be able to keep up we'll see and then it's going to deposit coal into the chest below so if we pop right down here real quick there we go it's producing coal perfect and i'm actually going to leave that open for just a minute here and then we need to set up the centrifuge so that we can start sending items over and then we can actually get the bees moved over and set up the sorting for this like i said this is going to take a couple episodes to get all this together because there's actually a lot of automation that's going to go into this but hopefully that's okay all right let's grab ourselves a silver transport pipe and then i also need to make up some ender chests and let's see we're gonna need let's see barnium obsidian white wool chest ender pearl not a problem and then i'm also going to want one more clipboard so wooden pressure plate and paper so give me just a second i'm actually gonna go ahead and craft up probably like eight ender chests and this clipboard we're gonna title it ender chests and we're gonna start off by saying white 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 is um primary insert is what white 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 is going to be because i want to make sure that we don't lose track of what ender chest colors and ender tanks are what um, within this because that does tend to happen and then i'm like well what color am i supposed to be needing here and so we're going to do this it'll make it a little bit easier on us um, to have that available and i'm just going to put this away into here for right now we're about to start adding chests quite a bit of chests over the next few episodes but anyways let me craft up a few ender chests okay i got our ender chests made i've got 10 of those and before we actually start setting these up let's go ahead and right down here i want to pull all this up because we actually don't need this anymore at this point and we don't really need this controller slave setting here and that also means that we don't need all this frame trim that runs down here that was just kind of a temporary setup uh, to make moving a little bit easier on us okay so now that that's pulled up let's go ahead and pop back over here and we'll just pop right down here and let's make another one of those gravity pipes so these right here the gravity fed transport pipes and what i want to do is i want to have these feed into general input because basically everything that goes through is going to go through general input and then it's going to get filtered into drawers if it can go there then get filtered out um, into you know other directions other other places basically so we're going to have a insertion pipe setting right here and then our gravity fed transport pipe setting right there and it should here in just a minute should pull the coal out and deposit it into our white 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 ender chest perfect okay so that part's done the items are getting pulled out to the white 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 line and we can go ahead and just fill this in because we don't actually need this anymore okay so everything on this side is covered now we need to cover the uh the centrifuge and so what i'm going to do i'm going to grab another one of our do i want to grab another one of these or do i just want to pump it underneath the floor okay so right now we have three things coming through here we have coal grains um oh, i can't pull them out let me grab just half of these honey drops and beeswax coming out of there so let's go ahead um, we're going to put an extraction pipe setting right there and then of course the items are going to come through let me actually fill this in real quick okay so we're going to have cobblestone transport pipe come out like right here let's say and then we're going to have a sorting pipe setting right there and let's actually put a routing pipe uh, just to be on the safe side we're going to put a routing pipe setting right there and we'll go ahead and say items can only go in this direction and then from there we're going to have a routing pipe setting right there and then it's going to bring the items up through here and then on the other side over here we're going to have another routing pipe and then cobblestone pipes that come out and let's see that's not a routing pipe uh, we'll put a routing pipe setting right here and then we'll go ahead and say this routing pipe only goes in this direction 
and then right over here this routing pipe can only travel up okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to say the red side is going to send honey drops and beeswax and then the green side is going to send cold grains over there and before we plug this part up let's go ahead let me actually grab a cobblestone transport pipe we'll set it right there and then let's warp over let's add honey drops and beeswax to our storage center and we'll put them like right over here let's say so honey drop goes right there beeswax goes right there we'll go ahead and toss in a couple storage upgrades top it off with a void upgrade and then over here for our coal production uh, right now it's got 104 stacks that'll be fine we'll go ahead and throw a void upgrade in that as well just to make sure if something does happen and we get you know just a ton of coal in it'll get voided because I want to make sure that any of the produce coming from the bees can get voided after a certain point because otherwise we're just gonna have so much of it on hand it's gonna get out of control really quick and then all that's left over here to do is take our wooden transport pipe our wooden engine make another gravity pipe and then stick it right on there so it's gonna start pulling the items out from there there goes coal grains they're getting pumped out and there goes honey drops and once it goes through here you can see the coal grains go up here and the rest of that stuff goes over to the chest and it looks oh yeah I didn't set up the insert over here whoops um, and then right over here let's go ahead and pull this up and I want to add in an insertion pipe eventually this is going to get changed over to XNAP but for right now this will be fine uh, so we'll do a clay transport pipe right there that's inserting into an auto workbench and then we'll bring this up our cobblestone transport pipes up like so and they'll plug into the auto workbench so then if I can't put this no I can't that's fine I'll throw it into there but then it's gonna craft our pulverized coal and over here it's gonna get sent over it's gonna start crafting coal then dumping it into the white 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 ender chest okay so over here this is done pretty much we just still have a couple things that we need to add which will be another ender chest line which we'll get into that here in just a minute but let's go ahead and warp back over to the storage center and we're gonna start handling the items that are actually coming from our general input and of course this is gonna be very intricate sorting system so there's a lot of steps I do apologize it's gonna take a couple episodes to get all this stuff in place but um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have our ender chest line. This is going to be our general input setting, say, right here it is our white, white, white. So here's our coal that we had uh, coming through the system right here. And so then what we're going to do is we're going to set up an extraction pipe, just a wooden extraction pipe setting right here. And for right now, I'm going to use BC pipes. This is going to change to XNAT later on. Uh, but BC is probably our best option for the time being. Our automation shouldn't be to such a crazy extent that this won't be able to handle everything. So it should be all right. So the items are going to get pumped out here. They're going to go through. Um, we're going to go ahead and put a routing pipe right here. Just to be on the safe side. And then we'll say. After that, there's going to be an insert pipe setting right here and we're going to get to that later that's going to be for something else that we're not doing right this second and then after that which actually I guess what I should do instead of doing that is yeah let's actually do instead of that let's do a silver transport pipe right there so we can filter things off of that line um, to other connections and for right now we're not going to filter stuff off we're just going to leave the silver transport pipe as is and then it's going to go through um, after that silver transport pipe, we're going to have another. Okay, and actually right here is our drawer system. So I'm going to go ahead. Let me grab some frame trim. I'm probably going to need a little bit more of this in truth. But let's go ahead and bring some trim up out of here. And yeah, I'm going to need more of this. We're going to run this over and I'm going to do a drawer controller setting or a controller slave setting over here so that it can insert into the drawer network if it's available it can insert down into there I'll tell you what let me actually reverse this so silver transport pipe setting there and then our routing pipe setting there would be better actually 
Okay, so we'll bring our trim up, and then we're going to put that controller slave that we pulled up from earlier, we're going to put this setting right here, and we're going to put an insertion pipe setting right there, and let's go ahead and open up that connection. So the stuff coming through general input, which he is currently coal, um, and what about the beeswax that we ran earlier? Did that not go into there for some weird reason? Oh, right here. I didn't I didn't fix this chalk transport pipe, so let's open that up. So the items can get sent through here. And then they should go directly into the ender chest. I don't think that they're gonna bounce back up there. They shouldn't. Perfect. Okay. Because it should prioritize this since it can actually insert into this since this is a extraction pipe. So even if it does go up here, I think it'll bounce back and go right into there, but um, I'll keep an eye on it, but I think it's going to be all right. Okay, so now we have some beeswax, honey drops, and coal in this system. So let's go ahead and set up our wooden engine setting right there, and then just give it some redstone. And there we go. It's going to start charging up, and it's going to start pulling the items out. They should get sent over and deposited into our drawer network. So there goes some coal. Let's go take a look at our beeswax, for example, and our honey drops. So right now we have 22 and 26, and we'll give this just a second. And I actually need to speed this up because one wooden engine, uh, it's just not enough, in truth. So I'm going to craft up two more wooden engines. Okay, that's a bit better. It's, it's pulling the items out three times faster. And whenever these can actually have a chance to build up some energy, it'll definitely speed it up. I mean, I have a bunch of stacks of stuff in there, like from the coal blocks. But if we take a look over here, uh, you can see we've got 43 honey drops, 38 beeswax um, in here. So it is it is properly getting deposited into our storage system uh, from that ender chest. Now, I will say that there are going to be other things that come through this. This line's going to continue on. Like, this is basically how we're going to set up our priority system. So priority, this is going to be the highest priority, so pulling items off of this line. Um, we have a couple things that we're going to be pulling off, and then it goes into the drawer network, and then it goes into more specialized sorting after that. So if the stuff doesn't have a place within our drawer network, you know, it'll go elsewhere. I just kind of want to have a general input system until we have, like, refined storage. We're going to have, like, a, a pretty semi-intelligent um, sorting system that can handle things on its own. Okay, now that that stuff's in place, we're ready to start actually moving over some of our bees. And I went ahead and turned off all the redstone signals for all the wooden engines because we actually... I don't want this stuff running right now because a lot of our system is dismantled. So it's just going to be like chucking items into the world. I do have these bees still running over here. The cobalt and ardite ones, they're still running, but the rest of these are turned off at the moment. So let's warp over to the bee temple. And we're going to go ahead and start putting these down. And I'm going to start, like I said, with just standard apiaries. And then we'll, later on, we'll change over uh, to industrial apiaries when we have the power uh, to facilitate that. So we'll go ahead and drop down our first two apiaries. Um, I'm going to get some more here in just a second. We're going to go ahead and set up the bee produce. So up here, of course, this is where drones and queens are going to go. And I'm going to store queens into drawers. And that way they can just go in there until it fills up and then it'll get voided. So our first two bees, we're going to put in coal princesses and coal drones. And then over here, we're going to put in crystal princesses and crystal drones. And we're going to start with these two and then we'll just kind of, it'll, it's going to be really easy to add additional ones, um, which we'll cover a few of them today and then I'll do a lot of them off camera. So let's grab our coal princesses, like one of each of these. And then let's pop back downstairs. And we'll go ahead and just toss in, like, this will be coal, this will be crystal. And then right here, let's actually pull up this stone for right now. And we'll pull up this as well. It's probably going to say, yeah, no flowers. Let me pop over and let me grab some flowers. Just to help this get started, we'll grab just a blue orchid. It'll be fine. And we'll just throw this down, like, right there. And then our base should kick on. There we go. And, by the way, I did make one change... Uh, forgot to show you guys that. I'm over in the storage center. Right here, I went ahead and changed this to a gravity-fed transport pipe because that's just way faster. Like, for example, if I grab... Uh, let's grab some pixie dust. And I throw in five stacks of pixie dust. Like, look how fast it pulls out. It's much faster 
with the gravity pipe than with the redstone engine. So if I need to speed it up, I can just add another ender chest, another gravity fed transport pipe, and then just connect it into this routing pipe that I added. Um, and just have them all, you know, going through there. It'll make it a lot quicker. But you can see, I mean, it pulled out five stacks of that, plus the coal and uh, honey drops and stuff that are coming in. It pulled them out fairly quick. So I decided that would just be a little bit quicker. So let's go ahead and make two more gravity-fed transport pipes. And of course, this piping is going to be somewhat temporary. Um, we'll go ahead and stick that on there, and hopefully we don't have any items coming out. We are. Let's actually wait on the gravity-fed transport pipes <laughs> for just a second. Let me grab a couple routing pipes. And we're going to stick these setting right here. And then I'm going to need some pipe plugs, which I did grab those. We're going to stick these on there to keep this from connecting. And what we're going to do is like, okay, this one's coal. And then right back here, we'll have, you know, more coal bees and then more crystal bees and so on. Just kind of duplicate it down through here. Um, let's get a couple insert pipes. And we're just going to plug these in right there. And then once again, pipe plug going right there. And then we're going to have... Uh, some stone transport pipes that come up and then they're going to come over yeah we're going to bring them over right here and let's go ahead and grab some pipe plugs so that we can keep all this from connecting up and I don't want that to connect or that to connect eventually we'll change over these conduits but for right now we're just going to use the BC ones because we've got you know we've got everything made for those eventually it'll probably change over to XNAT and then that's going to go over to a chalk transport pipe, chalk transport pipe, and let me actually pop over, let me get more chalk transport pipes, because we're going to bring them over to here and then bring it down um, under the floor. Okay, so we're just going to bring our chalk transport pipes, because eventually this is going to have apiaries down through here, uh, probably this episode actually, and I don't actually need that one right there. I just need to bring them, let's see, to right there. And then after that, we're going to have stone transport pipes that take them down underneath the floor. And let's go ahead and configure these. We're going to say items can go in this direction, items can go in this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, and this direction. And then we'll pop down here. Let's grab our stone transport line. And we're just going to bring this over and uh, let's see. We'll come to about right here. And we're going to go ahead and throw in another chalk transport pipe right here. Um, actually, one back. We'll put the chalk transport pipe right there. And then we're going to do an insertion pipe. And we'll go ahead and say items go in this direction. Uh, insertion pipe setting there. And then we're going to have our white, white, white ender chest setting right there. So the items can get sent over to that. Now, before we actually plug up these bees, because we're going to have... You know, we're going to have drones, we're going to have princesses, we're going to have combs coming through here. Uh, what I want to do, let's grab one of these fossilized combs. Let's grab uh, just a random drone. Let's grab crystal shards, and that should be good. Let's pop over to the, to the storage center. And the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to set up an ender chest setting right. I will put an ender chest setting right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put an insertion pipe uh, right here. And we're going to put, um, oh, let's see. Let's put a stone transport pipe setting. Uh, we'll put it setting right here. The white side, we're going to say only accepts crystal shards. So only crystal shards can go up to this ender chest. Let me actually pull this off for just a moment, actually. Put it right there for just a second. Let's grab a die of any color. I'm going to go with uh, Lapis. Lapis is easy and I've got lots of Lapis. We'll take that. We're going to say blue, white, white. And let's grab our clipboard. Blue, white, white is going to be crystal shards. Okay. And then we'll dump it into there. And I got to thinking we are going to need, before long, we're going to need additional um, condensers. We are going to have to set up more of those, but that's fine. Okay, so blue, white, white, sitting right there, that connects up to our crystal shard line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have crystal shards go over to the building over there. Um, you know, wherever we need crystal shards, they're going to get transported. And then whenever that backs up, then crystal shards are going to come over to 
uh, like right over here. And over here is where we're going to have the void upgrade, and it's going to void crystal shards after a certain point. Okay, so let's pop over to the B processing. Then we're going to set up an ender chest setting like right here, let's say. And it's going to be blue, white, white. And then let me let me pop over. Let me get an item extractor. Um, we'll do an item pipe system. So item pipe is going to plug into the drawer. And I'm using the drawer kind of as a, like a buffer. Um, and I think that'll be good because then if I want to add additional, you know, crystal inserters or something. Or crucible inserters, we can put them around this. Um, or over there. I think that'll be good. Um, kind of have like a buffer over here. I will say this buffer is a little bit more than what I need. So let's pull off, you know, one of these storage upgrades. 416. That's still a lot. Uh, that's still a whole lot. <laughs> in truth. But that's fine. That's fine. Because it's going to fill up pretty quick. Okay, so item extractor setting there. And lever setting right there. We'll be fine. So it's going to pull any crystal shards that come in, it's going to pull them into the drawer, and then from there pull them into the crucible inserters up here. And then what we're going to do, let's pop over, back over to the storage center. And right here, of course, it goes into that ender chest if it can. If it cannot go into that ender chest, we're going to put, uh, let me actually change this over to a routing pipe. We'll say that items can only go off in this direction. And then if it cannot get inserted into that, then we're going to have this come down underneath the floor and it's going to come over to our controller slave and get inserted right here so any crystal shards past that point uh, once this ender chest backs up are going to get sent over and get stored into our storage system so and i may um i may do facades on these or something but uh, for right now this will be fine okay and now now that that's done, uh, of course, this is where everything gets inserted into the controller slave. And actually, our honeycombs that come through the system, um, one thing I want to do, because I don't want to process these. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of point in processing these, because we're going to get beeswax and honey drops, which we're already going to be getting beeswax and honey drops in mass from everything else, you know, that's being processed. So we're, our honeycombs, let's go ahead, just throw them into here. And this has a void upgrade, a storage upgrade. We'll use those for building, is what we'll do. So that way those will get pulled off because they're going to have a place in the storage system um, to go to go through. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a sorting pipe. And this is where we need that gold chipset that we made earlier. And I want to make a jeweled transport pipe, one of these. So it takes four silver transport pipes and a golden chipset to get two. And I am going to have to make more of our silver transport pipes. That's fine. So there we go, there is our jeweled transport pipe. Perfect. And then what we're going to do is right up here, we're going to add in this setting like right, um, right here, let's say. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring this line out a little bit. So stone transport pipes that come over, get out of here. Uh, let's put a routing node here before we do that, just to make sure. And a jewel transport pipe setting there. Okay, and just so we don't have any bounce back. And we'll put that there. Okay, so the jewel transport pipe is basically a super sorting pipe. It's a very, very powerful sorting pipe. So what we're going to do, we're going to have um, stone transport pipes that come out. Like, one comes out in this direction, one comes out in this direction. And right here on the green side, or we'll start on the blue side. On the blue side, we're going to say that it's the north side. We're going to say that drones come through this line. Okay. And we're going to leave these unchecked. So, um, if they don't, if it doesn't go, if it, you know, if it doesn't go through this sorting, this little mini sorting system, and if it doesn't go into the drawer system, then it's going to go over and it's going to get, you know, pretty much every drone should go, should go over here. And we're going to put down our ender chest right uh, not right there put down an ender chest setting right there and then we're going to do an insertion pipe setting right there and then on this one and we're going to color that in just a second on this one we're going to say on the south side you're going to accept combs we don't uh actually oops, i'm sorry on this we don't want it to accept unsorted <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm losing my mind. So we're going to leave all these unchecked. No accept unsorted, no match MBT, no match metadata. 
And in this case, it should take all the combs that are not being taken by the storage system. Because our honeycombs are already being taken by the storage system, so they're going to go there with priority. And it has a void upgrade, so they're not going to get sent any further down the line. Um, then we can just use them for building purposes. And then we're going to do an insertion pipe setting here and another ender chest setting right here. Okay. And then let's get some dyes. I'm actually doing this rather easily. Uh, so right over here, white, blue, white, and then white, white, blue. Okay. We're just going to use blue dyes because it's easy enough. And we're going to say that white, blue, white is comb processing and then white white blue is drones and queens which i do need to add queens into that little processing line and we will uh, here in just a moment so that stuff is in place let me dump off some of my inventory here because it's getting a little bit out of control and our white white blue line let's go ahead and pop over to the b temple and we'll just pop up here and our white white blue we're gonna have this going right up to here so we'll just drop down an ender chest setting uh, we'll put it setting right there and let's see we're gonna put an item extractor setting right there let's go ahead and click off that connection we don't want it to connect there and then we're gonna have an item pipe setting right there and click off that connection and then give it some redstone and that'll be set that's going to handle all of our drones and queens that are coming in now let's go ahead and grab a queen and i'm actually just going to pop over and let me go grab just a new queen uh, from over here because i don't have any extra queens built up we'll just grab an appetite princess pop over to the storage center okay for some reason this just lost all of its filters that could be a problem <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna have to watch it and see if it keeps doing that because if it does that's gonna really throw a wrench in my plans and we'll have to change this up in favor of a different uh you know a different sorting system for this let me grab just a coal drone and i don't have any more fossilized combs on me okay north side was drones and queens and we'll leave that in there and then south side was combs. Hopefully it doesn't clear it this time. Because technically it's just like throwing items out too. Whenever it does that. So hopefully that'll that'll be good. I hope so. Okay. So now that stuff should be plugged up. Now we need to handle the combs. So white, white, blue. Um, and we'll pop over to the processing area. And right here on the centrifuge, I've actually got a hopper setting here. That'll be fine. Uh, so let's let's set down an ender chest. No, wrong thing. Ender chest right there. And this is, uh, I said white, white, blue, I think. I'm sorry, white, blue, white. Uh, so let's grab that. And we're just going to put that right there. So all of the combs go into here and they'll get pulled out by the hopper, deposited into our centrifuge, and they'll get processed. Okay, so now we should be ready to go add... Everything should be plugged up. That's assuming that it hasn't wiped my filters again. It has. It has wiped the filters. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Okay, I ended up crafting an item router from Immersive Engineering. So let's actually just pull this stuff up since that's not working, sadly, at the moment. <laughs> um, it's all sorts of buggy. Let's drop down. Let's move our routing pipe to here. And then we're going to have an insert pipe setting right here. And we'll go ahead and say items come through here. Let's do an item router setting right there. And then let's move our chests up. Well, we'll actually do the filters first. So white, white, blue was our queens and drones. Um, let's go ahead and say that this red side is going to handle our drones. We'll go ahead and say ignore their damage values. I don't think it actually matters for bees. We're not going to filter based on MBT. We're not going to worry about ore dictionary. So the drones will just leave like that. Let's go ahead and... Oh, I can't carry on that. And then I can't pick it up without this. Okay. <laughs> we'll go ahead and just set this right here. Um, oh, and I'm stuck. That's fine. 
And then right over here on this blue side, we're going to say you accept combs. And you have to watch out because the combs, I know, um, if I recall, if you have combs from Benny's Extra Bees, they don't go well um, if you have the, I'm going to set it to fuzzy on these as well. But the main thing is the MBT data, if I recall. Um, but the MBT data for combs, I believe it's different on Benny's Extra Bees um, compared to forestry, compared to gingistry. So you need to put one of each of those, if I recall correctly, um, if you're using them. Right now, I've just got Benny's Extra Bees fossilized combs going through here, so that'll be fine. And then I'll just move this up and over to there. And then one last thing that I want to add, just to be on the safe side, because we might run into some issues where things mess up. Um, I want to add a overstock chest. Oh, by the way, one thing that you can do is you can use crystal shards to craft. Uh, if you craft them together, you can make um, glass with it. So just a heads up. Okay, so there's an obsidian chest, and we're going to use this as kind of like an overstock chest. Now, this isn't where the storage processing stuff's going to end long term, but for right now, this will be good. We'll put that on the yellow line, and then it can export any excess items to this obsidian chest. And then if stuff goes in there, we know, well, it's not going somewhere. So now if I drop in, I did add princess to this, right? No, I have not. Let's do that. And then if I toss these into there, they're going to start getting pulled out, and we'll give them just a second to go down the line. There they go. They're going to try going in there. Of course, they can't. There's no space for them. And they're going to come down through here. We should say there goes queens and drones. And the coal drones, does it not have a place for them to go at the moment? Yeah, you can see the fossilized comb got pulled out. Um, let me pop over to the bee temple. Those should be the ones from the drawers, because that's where I pulled them from. Let's see, it's got a crystal princess backing up the line. Okay, yeah, the crystal princess that we have in here is actually different, it looks like. Okay, yeah, it's not going to accept the princesses, actually. Okay. So we're going to have to leave that clear. Yeah, the princesses we're going to have to handle a little bit differently, in fact. Because the problem with the princesses is they register, like, how many generations in captivity. I forgot about that. And so they're not going to be able to go into a drawer like that. So we'll just leave drones on this white, white, blue line. And then right here on the white line, um, we'll add just another ender chest. Let me craft up a couple more of these, I guess. Or do I just want to trash them? It's tempting. Very tempting. Yeah, I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to say the white line here. We're going to say you take drones, filter fuzzy, and we'll have these pumped up into just a chest. And then from that chest, then... We're going to, um, we'll do an item extractor setting right here. We'll go ahead and hit this with some redstone. We'll have an apiary's chest setting right here. So it can build up on queens. But then once that's filled up, then it's going to just send the items over to a trash bin. Okay. Because we don't want all these queens building up. And I may throw down like another, you know, a couple more apiary's chest or something. That'll be fine. But yeah, for right now, we'll just do that. And then I might end up doing... I'm not going to do it right this second, but I'm going to give it some thought. But I may do like an ender chest. Sends it over to the bee storage area. And then has like a line of apiary chest that fill up with queens. And then it gets trashed after that point. But for right now, this will be fine. This is basically the same general idea of what I would be setting up over there. Same basic premise. So then if I dropped in... Um, so then if I dropped in a princess, it's going to get pulled through, and yeah, this is all good over here. Can't go in there, so it's going to go down a little bit farther down the line. Go into there, and it should get pulled out. I must have sent it straight to the trash can. Yeah, that's fine. I'll figure something out. The queens aren't too big of an issue. I don't really need them right this second. I'll figure, because we're, we're about at wrapping up point, so I just want to get this stuff actually plugged up and running. And so now, we should be all set to actually just put the, the gravity pipes on here. The next episode, we'll kind of continue with this, because we've still got a little bit left to do. Um, basically, just lots of item sorting. So, everything should be handled. Let me go ahead and put this back into here. Uh, crystal shards are being handled, and everything should be good. So let me, I'm just going to put a pipe plug 
on that. I'm not telling you where that coal princess just went. Or coal drone. This needs to be opened up. Okay. So I opened up that. So it should be able to send the items around. Insert them if they can go in here. And then they'll go up and go through the system. Down over to here. And then we'll do the same thing. Right here. Place that down. Let's go ahead and hit that. There we go. And, oh, whoops. Whoops, pipe plug. Go. Why is that connecting when it shouldn't be? There we go. Okay, now it's not connected. I think it's a visual bug. I've been getting a lot of visual bugs um, at present. Okay, so there we go. Everything's going. Everything's working properly now. And the stuff's getting sent through. If we pop over really, really quick. Okay, so now if we come right over here and let me grab our ender pouch... And I was to throw in like 64 fossilized combs. This is from the base storage area. We throw them into there, and then here in a second, we should see them come into this centrifuge. So we'll know that all the comb processing and stuff is working. Everything should be set up and running just fine. Um, there we go. There comes the fossilized combs. So they're going to go into there, and it's going to build up. Um, I will say, I mean, this thing has a lot of stuff left to process. I'm definitely going to want more condensers. Of course, it's running. I've been running a lot of our backstock fossilized combs. So maybe after I leave this thing running, let it kind of uh, get rid of all this, like, excess junk. We should be all right, I think. But I just have so many combs and stuff built up, so it's it takes a little while, <laughs> in truth. Okay, so I know it's past wrapping up point, so I am going to end out this episode here. Um, I know we spent a long time just trying to get basically crystal bees and coal bees plugged up but on the plus side if i want to add additional bees and i am going to add some of them in uh, between this episode and next like for example if we have say runestone bees or rune bees uh these right here they produce honeycombs which we are already processing rune stones which all we have to do is they go into the storage drawers right so there's not a whole lot of processing steps involved with there uh, the main bees that we need to add in and we need to cover in the next episode is we're going to have to set up our like our steel bees where they need to be like smelted. Um, also tungsten bees. Uh, these, um, they produce the tungsten combs which produce tungsten dust which needs to be smelted. Appetite bees are pretty easy. We'll cover those. Um, and then like our metal processing bees, we need to cover those. But I mean the majority of these, like we have the, um, the bees that produce the gems like these. B produce, they come from the gym bees. That pretty much just plugs into our drawer network, right? So I am going to get some of these moved over, like the ones that really just need to be plugged in, and that's all that all that it really takes. So I'll get some of these bees cleaned up and get it kind of consolidated to see what we have left. Next episode, we're going to finish. Um, we'll probably finish out the storage, like plugging up all the bees. And sorting all their produce and stuff like that. We'll probably get that finished up next episode. So that our bees will be like 100% out, um, out of the Exoria dimension. Um, unless there's just certain bees that specialty produce only comes from Exoria. I've got to do some testing. And then if that becomes the case. Then we'll leave those in Exoria and just have an ender chest line. You know that sends the items over. So just have a few bees over there. Uh, but we'll see. So. Anyways, we'll finish this up next episode. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know down in the comments, and I'll do my best to get those answered for you. Also, I may end up moving our queen system over to the bee storage, just so, you know, it doesn't actually belong here, so I may. This is just kind of a temporary spot, but uh, I may move that over. It's going to be the same thing, just chest and transport. I'll probably actually use, um, since it seems to be prioritizing the trash bin instead of, like, the apiarist chest that's right here i may switch this over to bc pipes but other than that it's going to be pretty much the same idea so just an ender chest i need to make so but we'll get that finished out next episode finish out bee processing and then depending we may cover some other stuff as well because i don't think it's going to take too long but we do have to get um our new system set up for handling all of our metals so which is actually it's pretty easy and pretty quick but um we'll get into that next episode so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. I'm probably going to start the next episode recording here pretty soon, actually. Um, and then probably the following episodes, we're going to be building and adding in a workshop. So anyways, I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care. Stay safe. 
I'll see you guys then.